Good evening, viewers. I'm Godwin Aki, and welcome to another exciting and wonderful edition of House and Home. Always grateful to share with you the new educational programs on the show since the revamp. My team and I are still awaiting your feedbacks on what you like about the show and what you would love to see more on this program. Anyways, let's get the show started tonight with Brian Bill showcasing their very own North Star Stone cookware. Here is Jane and Theresa. <laughs> Hey, Teresa. Hi, viewers. I am Jane Takirala, and welcome to Brian Bell. So, Jane, I've been walking around and I came across these pots and pans. They're so eye catching, so beautiful. And I'm just wondering, what does Brian Bill have in store for us tonight? Well, Teresa, you're actually at the right section because tonight I will be featuring the Norse three piece cookware set. This cookware set consists of a casserole pot, which is 28 centimeter, and then we have two times fry pans of 24 centimeter, and a slightly bigger one of 28 centimeter. The marble cookware has become popular over the recent years because of its popularity, natural and organic cooking, and because of concerns raised about health effects in man-made non-stick coatings. However, this practice is not new to most of us Papua New Guineans because in the past we grew up eating in stone or clay pot cooking. Others still use this cooking style today and I'm pretty sure our kids will be using a more customized stone cookware in the future. This cookware set features a unique German design of marble coating inside and outside which is made to last. The grey stone colour would complement any modern kitchen and its construction is unlike any other cookware on the market. It's safe and reliable to use knowing that you're cooking safely and effectively for your family. The North Star stone pots and pans are free from Teflon, which are mainly man-made chemicals used in non-stick cookware. The cookware set is all you need to cook up a feast for the whole family. The casserole pot has a see-through glass lid which you can use on the small fry pan. The leads are made from tempered glass with strong handles and the interior consists of two layers of non-stick ceramic stone coating. The non-stick coating allows oil-free cooking which is healthier for you and still leaves the food full of flavour. The base is made from magnetised stainless steel alloy. So um, Jane, would I be able to use this marble cookware on any cooktop? Yes, the alloy base can be used on all induction cooktops or traditional cooktop surfaces such as gas, electric or ceramic. And the best thing about it is because of its marble coating, it's much easier to clean. They feature strong, durable, scratch-resistant coating, superior insulation and heat distribution, induction technology designed for stove or gas cooking, and non-stick, easy to clean surface. So do yourself a favor and pick up a set for your family and enjoy the benefits of its fast, even eating and natural properties of oil-free cooking. This product is so affordable, it can be the best gift for a loved one. Apart from featured products, we have items that will complement your No Star Stone three-piece cookware set. We have available heat-resistant utensils that are suitable to use on your cookware set. We have a wide range of wok turner, cooking spoon, omelette turner, rice spoon, slotted spoon, thongs, ladle pancake, schema, lifter slotted, spatula and much more. These products are available in quality brands such as Tramontina, Maxwell & Williams and Chef's Basic. 
So basically, we have products that will suit any budget. The hot specials for this week will include West Point 20 liter chest freezer with lock was priced at 795 kina, now reduced to 630 kina. Or you could even purchase through our consumer credit scheme. Yova 10 to 12 cup coffee maker was priced at 99 kina. Now you can walk away with it for only 71 kina. West Point 245 liter frost free fridge was priced at 1,990 kina. Now reduced to 1,576 kina. Or you could even purchase through our consumer credit scheme. Make sure you benefit from this great offer which is valid for this week. Finally, for those viewers who are heading out of town this Easter weekend, make sure you are equipped with the necessities. So drop by your nearest Brianville Home Centre and pick up your travelling accessories from our outdoor section. For those of us who will be involved in Easter church activities, well, we have assorted candles, candle holders and a wide range of home blessings collections to choose from. Now you know you can turn to us simply because you're backed up by Brian Bell's warranty service and spare parts. So remember, great products, great prices, that's Brian Bell. Until next time, happy shopping and blessed Easter. Good night. Thanks for that, Jane. There you go, viewers. That was Brian Bill showcasing their Nosta Stone Cookware. So if you want to see and know more about this product or if you'd like to purchase a set for yourself, just make your way to the Brian Bill Home Center Gardens located at Kennedy Road Gardens in the National Capital District, Port Mosby. Let's go for our first break and we'll catch up soon with more. Welcome back, BSP has come a long way and it is still keeping up with the best service ever for its customers. Let's take a look at what they have for us tonight. Here's Rosemary Mawe and Tasman Samuel. Good evening viewers and welcome to another BSP program. Tonight we begin with the highlights of the 2015 Pacific Games ticket launch at the BSP house at Harbour City in the nation's capital. The launch took place on the 26th of March, which also marks 100 days to go before the 15th Pacific Games in our beautiful city of Port Moresby. As 100 days to go from the launch, BSP as official sponsor is giving away free tickets to customers who transact via mobile banking. For the month of April, BSP customers who purchase airtime top-up using BSP mobile banking get registered and randomly selected to receive free tickets. More on this information and how to purchase, where to purchase the ticket will be explained to you by Tasman Samuel, Games Organising Committee Ticketing Manager. Thank you, Rosemary, and good evening, viewers. 650,000 tickets are now on sale. They started last Thursday, March 26. Uh, tickets are being sold at 17 selected BSP branches. That's nationwide, and they include branches in Port Mosby, Ley, Goroka, Mount Hagen, Kokopo, Kimbe, Buka, Madang, Wewak, and Alotau. There will be additional outlets apart from BSP, and they'll open in mid-April, along with bulk ticket sales. Prices of the tickets, they range from as low as 10 kina all the way up to 30 kina. Apart from the individual tickets, there are packages available in the category of venue and sports. To purchase a ticket or a package, you'll need to get a hold of the Games Ticket Purchase Guide. Uh, this guide has been designed to help people make purchasing of tickets a lot easier and quicker. It also shows you how to fill out your order form. 
Ticket purchase guide and order form are all available at all selected BSP branches, or they can be downloaded from the game's website, www.portmosby2015.com. And of course, for more information, you can call the game's hotline, which was also launched last Thursday on 180-2015. That number again, the game's hotline, 180-2015. Thank you, Tasman, and the tickets are going fast. Straight after the ticket launch, 326 tickets were purchased in Port Moresby on Thursday 26. Now, with less than 100 days to go, Pacific Games sports are all gearing up. BSP continued its support to the PNG Swimming Inc. this month with 80,000 kina towards the BSP National Aquatic Excellence Program. Now this program helps develop young swimmers so they can pursue professional and competitive swimming careers. A number of athletes in the Pacific Games in the PNG swim team have come out from this program. The program also motivates volunteers to pursue careers as coaches, administrators and technical officials in swimming. Still on water sports, BSP continued its platinum sponsorship of 25,000 kina towards the 40th National Gaming Fishing Titles to be held in the waters of Port Moresby over the Easter weekend. In addition, BSP also is putting up a 100,000 kina cash prize for the first angler that lands a mullein weighing over 250 kilos. Now moving into charity support, the Australian Doctors International or ADI are now able to reach more rural communities in New Ireland and deliver basic health care services through the support of BSP with 50,000 kina. ADI is a non-government organisation that has been in New Ireland province working successfully with people of New Ireland since 2003. The organization sends volunteer doctors to conduct health patrols with provincial health teams to the remote parts of the province. This month, Cyclone Pam hit one of our Pacific Island nation, Vanuatu. And BSP has made a donation of 100,000 kina towards relief efforts in Vanuatu. BSP made the presentation to Vanuatu Red Cross to assist in immediate relief supplies like food, clean water and sanitation, medical aid to affected communities as well as contributing to longer term relief operations in rebuilding the lives of fellow Pacific Islanders affected. Well viewers, that's all we have for you tonight but before I go, don't forget to visit our BSP nominated branches to purchase your 2015 Pacific Games ticket. Until then, see you next time for more BSP updates. Good night. Thank you, Rosemary and Tasman. There you go, viewers, something to consider for the Pacific Games. And I believe it has been made crystal clear to you all together with the launch and the Vanuatu charity. Let's head off for a short breather and we'll see you soon. We care about improving lifestyles. It's all about the better man for your life with house and home. Papua New Guinea has so many animal species that make our country special and unique. For some of these animals are only found in Papua New Guinea, separating us to the rest of the world. Tonight, we catch up with Teresa Miria and Ishimu Bebe to tell us about the olive python.
Hi people, I'm so glad you could join me once again on Animal Place. Well, guess what? We've been looking at one of the particular animals that the whole world regards as dangerous and poisonous. Well, it is none other than the python, the olive python itself. This is the animal itself. And we will be revealing some of the ways in which you can differentiate between this species and the rest of the others that are related closely to it. Let's go find out. The olive python is one of the largest snakes that can reach sizes in excess of 4 meters but has an average size of 2.5 meters. It has a uniform body color of olive, greenish brown, reddish brown and the ventral color is usually off white. Here before me is actually the olive python. It was actually brought in from Brown River. It was actually 2 meters long. And as you can see, it's now four meters long. And we're actually gonna find out about what it eats here in the park compared to where it was brought in from. In the wild, the diet consists of birds, mammals, and other reptiles, and also including rock wallabies, fruit bats, and ducks. They prefer to lie in wait next to animal trails to ambush their prey. Alternatively, they are strong swimmers and also known to prey on monitor lizards and crocodiles. Compared to the diet here at the nature park, they usually eat lab mice, which are actually bred for the olive python itself. Breeding season occurs from June to August with males moving long distances up to 4 kilometers in search of females who may emit a pheromone to attract males. Males and females often move into shelters such as a cave and remain for up to three weeks. Eggs are laid in October and hatch in approximately January. Mating activity starts in May and continue through until mid-July. When successful, this is followed by a gestation period of 81 to 85 days after which the oviparous females lay 12 to 40 eggs in late spring. The young disperse from the place of birth searching for food. Threats to the habitat include major fire events, foxes and further development of mining infrastructure. In some areas, mining development may directly affect the habitat of the olive python, alter prey availability to the species and increase deaths through road impacts. With a limited range and restricted habitat, the subspecies may be vulnerable to disturbance through increasing numbers of tourists using water holes. These creatures have been deliberately killed on roads near houses and water holes when mistaken for venomous snakes. All right, according to Mr. Bebe, who is one of the education officers here at the park, the animal itself has lived in here for almost nine years and we're going to go find out more about it through Mr. Bebe. Let's go find out. Okay, uh, this snake was brought in by locals to reserve around Port Mosby. Basically, this one was brought in from Brown River. Now, this snake is an olive python and as you can see here is, uh, this one was brought in when he was quite young. It was around uh, two meters and now the snake has grown to uh, four meters. Now, the reason why we're keeping this snake here is that for education purposes, and one important role that this species, the python, plays to the rainforest is that uh, it basically controls the mice population in the wild. Therefore, it has an ecological significance to the ecosystem, and these pythons here are not venomous, meaning that they don't have uh, a poison to the kill the prey, but what they do is that they are constrictors. They coil the prey, suffocate the prey or their food, and then they swallow them. That is why you can see here that they, they, they always throw their tongue out, and they also have the heat pits on the sides here, so that these heat, heat pits here aids this python here to catch its prey or its food to, uh, to eat. And they come under the reptile family, which basically means that they are cold-blooded animals and therefore these animals will sometimes have to sunbath or bask in the sun 
to increase the body temperature for the digestion of the food that is inside the dig digestive system. Thank you, Teresa, for your time. What a creature. Well, according to Mr. Bebe, the olive python is one of the creatures that help reduce the mice population. Because without it, it can cause an imbalance in the ecosystem. I hope you have learned something and please do join me next time on Animal Plus. I'm Theresa Miria and it's bye for now. That was wonderful, Teresa. And kids at home, I'm sure if you're watching this, you've learned something about the olive python. It's all about the better man for your life with house and home. Yeah, it's all about the better man for your life with house home. We care about it. about the better man for your life with house and home yeah it's all about the better man for your life with house home today women in Papua New Guinea have their own ways of sewing both traditional and modern way of sewing different types of materials to create wonderful garments and accessories. For some, sewing has become part of who they are, what they do, and how they benefit from it. Tonight, we join the beautiful Maya Manese with Teresa showing us the steps and ideas on how to make window curtains. Hi everyone, I am so glad you could join me once again on Plus Belong Yumi. I believe you'll be enjoying for now because we'll be learning how to sew some more beautiful things with the great help of Mrs. Manase right here with us. Hi Mrs. Manase, how are you doing? Hi Theresa and hi viewers, I'm doing good. Okay Mrs. Manase, what will you be teaching us for now? Theresa and viewers, tonight I'll be teaching you how to sew an indoor curtain. Great. Stay with us, stay focused because I believe you will not want to miss any step. Okay, let's begin. So, there are simple, specific items that you need to sew. So, I'm going to hand it over to Mrs. Manase and she will tell us what we need to sew this beautiful, simple indoor curtain. All right, Theresa, thank you. For sewing a curtain or anything else, you would need firstly a pair of scissors, a tape measure, some lace pins, yarn picker, and laces or frills to go with your curtains, and of course the material itself. There you go viewers, this is all you need for sewing. So I'm going to let Mrs. Manase to lead us. Thank you. Okay, viewers, we've now laid out our material on the table. That's two and a half meters of specific curtain material. You, I will firstly need a scissors and of course my tape measure to cut half a meter, which is 50 centimeters off my two and a half meters for the frills. Here we go. Okay viewers, now that it's been pinned, it's ready to be cut. This is not needed, the one we're cutting out. Okay, yeah, great. Right, that's cut. Now I will have to fold these 50 centimeters that I have just cut off in half across the width, of course, like so. Lay it back on the table. There's your middle there. And measure up from this bottom side 30 centimeters up, which I will mark. Of course, need my lace pin and pin that way. From there, I fold in a chunk.
triangle like so to create a triangular piece. And I will also cut that out. First of all, I need to pin that like so. And now I'm ready to cut off this piece that we don't need from the bottom of this folded edge here, pinned, I'm cutting, I'm cutting that out. Like so. Finished, you take the pins off and remove this strip that you don't need. Thank you. Okay, we're done with this. Now you can open it up, right side up, and you can see we have created a triangle at the bottom of the fold. So there you go, viewers. Now that we have cut out our triangle, we're now going over to the overlocker to sew the edge of the triangle for the frills, of course. So um, why do you need the overlooker for this piece? Thank you, Theresa, for that question. And importantly, viewers, you need an overlooker to knit in every edge you sew. For this matter, I have not sewn the frill yet, so I want to knit in that edge before I sew the frill on. This is the cut edge that we need to sew up under the overlocker. So this is how you push the thing in, just there, just before the needles. And then you switch on your power. And you are ready. This is your trimmed, neatly overlocked edges. There's your corner. You don't want, you don't really want, need a straight corner. You just curve it in as you go through that corner. That's how it looks like. Right, I've just finished my overlocking. I'm going over, heading over to the industrial machine to add on my frill or sew on my frills. So, um, Mrs. Manasseh, before you actually sew, um, can you please differentiate between uh, this machine and the overlocker? Oh, since you've shifted from there to here, I believe our viewers really want to know the difference between why you are using two machines at the same time. Thank you, Teresa and viewers. Yes, that was a very good question. This here, which I'm sitting on, is specifically used to sew two pieces of materials together on a straight stitch. As for the overlocker, it is to deaten out every edge of frills that you cut out on any material. This is the lace which I'm going to use to sew on the actual triangle. Now before I sew that, I need to pin. I need to pin on my lace on the actual seam line. Now Teresa, I would need my pins. Yep. Thank you. That's the first one. I am making sure that it's just above my overlock stitch. The importance of this pin is to hold the lace in place at the correct seam line. Okay, Teresa, can you help me pull that other edge? Sure. Yes, because this lace is a bit stretchy and I need somebody to pull the edge there. And so I can be able to pin in my lace at the right seam line. Wonderful. Now we're ready to sew. Now I'm just going to lift up this foot here. That's the presser foot that holds the material in place while I'm sewing. Here we go. There. Now you just turn your needle in over the, um, the lace where you're going to sew and each time you, each time you run the stitch closer to a, a pin, you take out the pin. Now I'm taking out another pin. I 
another one. Wow, I can just imagine how beautiful this curtain is going to look like once it's sewn. Of course, it's going to look beautiful. There we go, we're at the end. And you can see that overlock that. There you go, viewers. I'm done. And this is how the frill would look like after you sew it on on the actual triangle. Now I'm ready to sew the sides of my curtain. So are we going to need the other two meter to hem as well? Definitely, Teresa. The side seams would have to be folded one centimeter in first, like so, and then another centimeter. Then I place it under my presser foot again to be stitched. I'm continuing with the seam, and this is the two meter piece. Same procedure, one centimeter before the next centimeter unfold, and under the press of foot, and we're sewing. Okay, viewers. We're now done with the seams on both sides of the two meters of the material, of the curtain, actually. And we're just about to pin the triangle onto this two meters. The weed, right? Yes, and at the top. We're gonna actually run, sorry, pin the triangle at the top of these two meters. All right, viewers, we're now at the cutting table again, and we're gonna be pinning on the triangle onto the two meters. With both seams already sewed, we're now going to place the first two meters wrong side up, and the shorter piece, which is, of course, the triangle on top of that. Now, Teresa, would you kindly hand me my lace pins and help me to pin every step of the way? Like so. Thank you, Teresa. You, I know you're learning so much, eh? I am, I yeah. am. Good I'm on really you. Enjoying it. Yeah. Thank you, we're at the end, viewers. Yeah, pin this. Mm -hmm. Okay, just one little bit here. And viewers, we're ready, uh, we're done with our pinning. We're going over to the machine again to run a seam. Tap. Now the seam is one, one centimeter in here. Thank you. And here we go. All right, viewers, we are now done with the stitching of the two pieces together on wrong sides, of course and we're ready to overlock, to neaten the edges. Okay. Yes, yeah, so another thing that the overlocker does is every strain thread that you've just done on the stitching is actually cut off by the overlocker. Okay, there you go, viewers. This is how it's looking after the stitching of the triangle, right, uh, wrong side up over the two meters of the curtain, which is the longer bit. And after it has been overlocked, 
We are now going to turn over the shorter side this way, and I'm going to help uh, ask Theresa to help me show that to you. Thank you, Theresa. And viewers, this is how it looks like. Okay, viewers, we're nearly done. And I understand that many of you viewers out there would be using or would prefer to use rods or strings at home for your curtains. And for that matter, you would have to measure five centimeters down from where I'm holding, five from the top, five centimeters down, pin that along, stitch, and then another five centimeters down, pin that. These five, next five centimeters would be for your rod or your string to pull through. For rod or string users, firstly, mark in five centimeters at the top and then another five centimeters below the first one for your rod or string to go through. Pin along the marks to make sure your rod or string fit before you finally sew along your pinned marks. Wow, beautiful, isn't it? Just by looking at it, I just, I just can't, you know, describe more, but to say it's beautiful. It was very interesting. Thank you so much, Mrs. Manase, for your time, Welcome. your talent and your skills. We really, really appreciate it. And I believe our viewers out there have really enjoyed it. So I'm gonna try one when I get home, I'm just saying, but seriously, you should try one as well. And trust me, there are men out there that can sew. Not only women can sew, but there are men out there that can sew. So young boys and girls, it's time you, you should start learning how to sew. Simple things like this, you might need that in the future, I'm just saying. So join us next time on Bless Belong Yumi. I'm Teresa Miria. Bye for now. And that was very interesting. To you mothers at home, I'm sure you now want to go out to the shops and buy some materials to make curtains for your home. Don't go away because coming up next, we have Healthy Living with Mila. Keeping fit and healthy is what we all want to achieve. Showing us tonight on how to use our upper body to do stretches. Here's Mila. Last week, we covered lower body stretches and highlighted what are ballistic, dynamic, and static stretching. So, let's see what upper body stretches you need to know tonight. We're going into the upper body stretching and that's including the back of the, the arms and the front arms, the back and the chest, and likewise the core, okay. Now, I'm going around here. Kamuna is going to use the stick. The stick will have a lot of th uh, things to use when you're doing stretching. Now, Kamuna is going to do a back stretching first. I am going to pull the stick away from Kamuna. Suck that in. Bring your knee in. Perfect. Can you see this? That is what Kamuna is stretching, the upper back. Okay, now Kamuna, stand up please. Back to normal position. Then we are going to stretch the part of this muscle by bringing 
the arms over, back, release, down, okay? This stretching is good for people who are strengthening their deltoid, their triceps, their chest, and the upper part of the body. And also, this is good to lengthen the side of the body. Okay, and keep going, inhale and exhale, engage, beautiful. And last two. And I want Kamuna to turn around. So, including your legs. And show that chest part that he is stretching, his biceps, and this part here, which is the lats. Keep going, Kamuna. And down, right down. Good one. Inhale. And exhale now. I want you to face towards your back, please. But keep doing it, keep doing it. But I want you to turn around. Keep doing it, Kamuna. Good one. Keep doing it. Excellent. Can you see the upper part of the body? His upper, his upper arms are all stretching. Okay. Now, I'm going to remove this from Kamuna. So, Kamuna is going to show us how to do a tricep stretch by bending his elbow, arms over his back, and elbows will be held by the opposite arms. And this is what we are stretching. It's the tricep. Okay. And see how the tricep will be stretched. Look at the arms here, it's just resting behind his, his back and how he's holding his, his um, working tricep. And don't hold your breath, keep breathing. You at home, stretch it and release. Now, Kamuna is going to show us the deltoid, which is this part of the muscle across your arms here, across your arms from your chest, okay? And other arms is to support against your lower arm and press it towards your opposite shoulder. And this is what you are stretching. Now we are showing the bicep exercise. Come on, extend both of your arms palm is facing to the front first and then slightly twist your lower arm and bring both of the arms right towards your back inhale and exhale and at this time if you're doing it at home you can feel it right on your bicep that's the best way of stretching your bicep and release okay the last one is the stretching of your chest. Now, we're going to stretch Kamuna's um, chest by holding both of the arms towards your back. Uh, clasp your hand. Good. And bring your chest up. Yep. And press your shoulder together towards your back. And this is what we are stretching, that part there. Now, I am going to show you guys how Kamuna is doing it right towards his back. Look at the palm. Look at the upper back. Okay. And back, Kamuna kept on breathing, which is the right thing to do. You remember, this is 10 to 30 seconds stretching. And release Kamuna. Well done. If we, we can, can do it, you can, can do it. Do it. Yay! Awesome. Love it.
thanks Mila for showing us the upper body stretches and I hope you viewers now know the right steps to upper body stretches and you can do this anytime at home to keep yourselves fit. Well viewers it's that time where we have to leave you. Please follow us on Facebook, like our page, tell us what you think we should put on the show. If you have some great ideas or shows that would interest you, go to our Facebook page and let us know. Join us next week again for more interesting shows. Until next time, thank you for watching House and Home from me and the House and Home team. Enjoy the rest of the viewing. I'm Godwin Eki. See you then. Oh